Hey, hey, y'all, what's going on? What's going on? It's me. I'm back, and I got a fabulous, savory dish for you. On these cold winter days, I got Pat's Famous Chili that's going to warm your heart and soul. Let's get into it. Okay, it's tons of ingredients here, but I promise you, y'all, I promise you, this chili will set your house on fire. And I don't mean by the heat of the mouth, but everybody would absolutely love it. So quickly, let's run through the ingredients. I've got me some bacon um, uh, here that I'm gonna use to render off, and I'm just gonna uh, step aside for a minute and turn on my fire so it can start to get hot. That's what we're looking for. So I got my Dutch oven here. I've got some uh, kidney beans. Uh, I like the dark kidney beans. They've been rinsed and drained. They're sitting over here in my colander. Um, I've got some, um, some Italian sausage, but you can also use some ground pork. Um, I've got some... Um, ground beef, crushed cherry, uh, crushed tomatoes. I've got some diced tomatoes. Um, I've chopped up, I already chopped it because I know y'all don't want to see me stand here and chop onions. Two medium onions, garlic. I've got uh, my spices, which is chipotle, pep uh, chipotle chili pepper, chili powder, oregano, cumin, and some um, paprika. Um, and so now we're just gonna get started. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm just gonna pull my bacon off here. And I'm just going to chop them in chunks. And we're gonna brown this bacon um, into our Dutch oven. Great thing about chili is it's a, um, it's a really a one pot dish. Um, you don't have to do a bunch of other things and all of that. And by the way, my ground beef is um, 85-15, so it's 85% lean. Um, and I like a lean ground beef. Uh, one of the reasons is, with the way we're doing this, you won't have to drain it. Um, we'll just be able to go right in. So we're just chopping this bacon in nice little chunks. I prefer to use bacon as opposed to um, like vegetable oil or um, olive oil. I may have to add a little bit because we got so many vegetables, but I like bacon because it's the, the fat off of the, uh, the oil off of the bacon is gonna definitely uh, add more flavor. So we're just gonna let that sit. So while my bacon is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my um, red bell pepper and my yellow. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna remove the rib and the seeds out of them. Don't really need that. When I was a kid, it was six of us. And so my mom used to make this all the time. And um, I was born in Detroit, but really raised in Memphis. And so it was a great, uh, winter savory dish. Uh, it's like a lot of uh, your stews and chilies. Really great the next day. So we're just gonna chop these up. I'm gonna move my spices to give me more room. Now that I've showed you what's in them on my board. We're just gonna chop these in nice little chunks. I love the color of these peppers. Um, and the flavor. I didn't use a green bell pepper um, because I like the red and yellow for my chili. Like so. My bacon is getting there. I'm just going to turn it around. Use the back of your spoon if it's thick. 
like that. Let's finish with these. Give it a rough chop. Okay. So now we'll do the same with our yellow bell pepper. Just take my knife and go right along there. They come right on out. I always like cutting my bell pepper with the skin side down because they seem to cut a lot better. And of course, I always have a good sharp knife. That's super important. You see how my knife just whisked right on through. I ran it across my sharpener just before I started. It's a good idea to do that. You just take these and go right across. This boy ain't giving me enough room. But I'm making it work. <laughs> All right. You don't have to chop these too fine because they're gonna soften and just create more flavor. Let me stir this a little more. Bacon is getting there. We want it brown, we want it crisp. But more importantly, we want the fat to render off of the bacon, because that's gonna be our oil to saute our vegetable. You just spread them out so that they can evenly brown. And all of that good old, as my grandmama used to say, fat grease renders. Just like so. Okay. You can always scrape the brown bits with the back of your wooden spoon, that's just gonna add additional flavor. We'll let that finish, and I'll finish up my peppers. I'm gonna rough chop across them, like so. All right, so we got those. Our bacon is looking great. I gotta say, I timed this just right. All right. It's good and brown. You don't want to burn it, you just want it brown. And you see all that excess of oil in there? It's gonna be absorbed by the vegetables. So I think we're in pretty good shape. So what we're gonna do is go right in with our peppers. Whenever I am uh, sauteing vegetables. Like I start with my larger vegetables, like the bell peppers are a little bit larger than the, um, the garlic. And I like to, really like to kind of stir as I go. I don't just dump everything. So now we'll come back with our onions. Okay, just right in there. Okay, I'm we'll gonna give these a quick stir. All incorporated. Doesn't that color look amazing? And just like I told you, you can see that the vegetables have truly absorbed um, the grease. Now, lastly, I'm gonna add my garlic. Garlic is always so thin, I add it last so that it doesn't burn. You can mess up a whole dish by burning your garlic. All right. And as usual, I um, always give it some salt, nice little portion of salt, and some pepper. And you can go as heavy as you want, depending on how uh, hot you want your chili, because I'm not using a cayenne pepper, so I go a little bit heavier. You can, if you really wanted uh, a hot um, chili, just add more cayenne pepper, or you can add some pepper flakes or something like that. All right, so we're gonna let this work. And now, what I like to do is to add my spices because my spices, uh, while the vegetables are sauteing, 
will just um, add flavor to my vegetables. This is, this is the base, y'all. This is where all of the magic happens. And it should really start to thicken up now, as you can see. Okay, so now that we got that, we're gonna go right in with our uh, ground beef. Okay, and just work that around, get that all chopped. Into your vegetables, it's gonna brown. Like I said, 85, 15, not the 70, 30 or whatever. That's gonna be just too much oil. So you just want that to brown in with your peppers and onions. You know, I like to just make sure it's all incorporated like so. And while that's browning, Like I said, a lot of times I like to, um, I'm just gonna leave it alone. I like to use uh, ground pork. But ironically, when I went to the store, there wasn't any. So, um, and that happens often in the store. So what I decided to do is just get some Italian sausage, it's pork. And what I do is I just come straight down the um, center of it. Cause I don't want the whole deal and then you just peel off the skin and just kind of dump your sausage in here. All right. You, want the, you don't want that skin on it. I told y'all it's really easy because it's all going in the pot together. Just turn it so the sausage can get on the bottom and brown. It's, it smells amazing y'all, I'm telling you. It's one of my favorite dishes to make in the winter time. All right, so then we come with the last two. Like so. Kind of. And I really like to really chop. Um, I don't want big chunks of meat. I know it seems like a lot of meat. When we get to add our tomatoes and our liquid and everything, it's going to all balance out perfectly. Now, we're cooking with gas. Literally. <laughs> that looks great. And you notice I'm still just kind of turning and chopping and tending to my pot. But just like that, everything is good and brown. So now, here is the real, um, and I didn't mention it earlier, y'all may have seen it. But here's my secret. So I use for my liquid beer, um, your regular store-bought, just regular beer um, as my liquid. And I think I'm gonna add a little more. I got more meat than I thought. I'm gonna add a little more to it. Just like that, because um, I add a few more beans than um, normal people because I just love red kidney beans. So we're going in with our diced tomatoes and I didn't drain them because the liquid from the tomatoes adds more liquid to it. So it's all about a consistent um, chili. And so now we can turn it up just a little bit we want to bring it to a ball. Then I'm coming in with my crushed tomatoes. Like 
that. You see, you see what's happening. And now, I told y'all it was a lot of ingredients. I almost burned myself. There's a lot of ingredients, but it's um, just dumps once you brown your meat and you get your vegetables going. So then we just come in with our kidney beans. And like I said, I never measure my kidney beans. I had about, um, I would say about five cans and I um, rinsed them and drained them. Um, I had a recipe once uh, that called for like black beans. So you could go half black beans, half kidney, but I just don't know. I mean, I grew up with straight kidney beans. I think they have so much flavor. Um, they have a firmness about them that holds up um, to the chili and the cooking. I'm just talking and spilling stuff everywhere. So now what we wanna do, we're gonna bring this to a ball. I'm gonna put a lid on it. Once it comes to a ball, um, I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it to a ball. Once it comes to a ball, um, then I'll turn it down. I'll let it simmer. And oh my God, I mean, the longer you cook this chili, the better. Um, you could take it and uh, put it in a crock pot at this point and let it just simmer all night and let all of those flavors marry together. Um, but for you guys. You can use a Dutch oven, bring it to a boil. Remember to constantly stir every 10 or 15 minutes. Go in there and stir it to keep it from sticking. And when we come back, we'll be ready to dig my fork into some of Pat's famous chili. Y'all stay with me. All right, guys. It's been about two, two and a half hours. And so now, and, I, and I've been constantly stirring it. Let's take a look. Oh yes, baby. Ooh wee. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, it smells delicious. This is just one big old pot of deliciousness. All right, so before I get ready to plate it and put it into a bowl, I got me some sharp cheddar here. And I just want to grate me some fresh cheddar. That's more than enough. Okay. And then I've got me some um, some scallions just for garnish. Um, and they add a little oniony flavor to it. That ought to be enough. Okay. So we got that. So I told y'all this is like a like a real old school recipe. My mom used to make it for us. And because she had five boys and one girl, I always thought that she was trying to stretch the chili. But in our household, and I, I've carried on the tradition, I make some um, some white rice. My mom used to do it. And she would just line it in the bottom of the bowl like that and I've asked around a lot of people you put rice on your uh, yes I do but I've also found some people that say oh yeah we made it that way so your preference you don't have to have it but in the Neely household we have it so what I do is just grab me a couple of nice ladles and go right across the top of my rice and you can see the tomatoes they cooked in um, and so then we come um, with some cheese just right across the top like so it'll melt and then I like to take me a nice little dollop sour cream on top. A little bit more. Use my hand. Right? I'm just sit up like that. Okay. And we're almost there. 
we just sprinkle a few of our scallions on like so. And just like that, <laughs> you have it. This is Pat's famous chili. I've been making it for years. My mom made it for me and, and all of my siblings on a cold, wintry day or a fall day. There's nothing like a great bowl of chili. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Um, my family and I have enjoyed it for generations. Um, I wanna thank you all for all your support uh, for watching this video and all of the upcoming videos and the past videos. Please go ahead, tell a friend to tell a friend to hit that subscribe button. If you like it, hit the like button. Uh, you might as well hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of my uh, great recipes. And also, um, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. I'm really uh, interested in what you think about this recipe and all my recipes because I do read my comments and, and I will respond. Until next time, enjoy Pat's Famous Chili. Thanks, y'all.